A quilt is made from a top, a middle, and a back. This is called a quilt sandwich. So how do you lay them together? So they don't shift while you're machine quilting, <clears throat> which then can cause wobbly seams and create creases, which we don't want that. Here are five different methods to create a quilt sandwich. Be sure to stick around and I'll show you how. Hi, I'm Jackie with Jackie Russell Creates, where I give tips, tricks, and techniques for your next quilting needs. I'm very close to 500 subscribers, so I would greatly appreciate it and be so grateful from the bottom of my heart if you'd hit that subscribe button to, and to support this channel. Most people hate making quilt sandwiches. They are time consuming and can be hard on the body. It is fussy and awkward. So can sure, so be sure to give yourself plenty of time. To make a good sandwich, you need three things. You'll need a quilt top that lies flat. So be sure to give your quilt top a good press before you start. You might have a couple of places where the seams just don't lay fl as flat as you would like. Give them a little extra attention and they will. Second, you're going to need a middle or the batting. It should be four inches taller and four inches wider than your quilt top. This video isn't about batting that you can be using. I did a video on that already and it can be found here or in the description below. So be sure to check that out after you finish watching this video. The third thing that you need is a back, which also needs to lay flat. If you're sending it off to a long armor, it should be eight inches taller and eight inches wider than your quilt top. But if you're quilting it on a sewing machine, which is what we're talking about in this video, it should only be four inches taller and four inches wider than your quilt back. Be sure to find a space where you can spread it out. I use either my bedroom or the floor. But for this video, I'm going to be demonstrating on some smaller mini quilts. But it's the same concept, no matter what size quilt you are doing. You want to tape down your back so that it lies flat. Don't stretch it. <clears throat> If it is too taut, it will lead to creases when you remove the tape. Next, lay the batting on top. When you lay out your batting, it is not aggressive. Pushing or pulling, <coughs> as <coughs> that can stretch it out of shape. It is more of a gentle negotiation. Be patient and take your time. If you can't coax a wrinkle out, just lift up the batting and place it back down again and begin again then repeat with the top once I finished my quilt sandwich I trim off the extra batting there's a lot of fiber that comes off in the batting it gets on your gloves it gets on your face it gets everywhere the less it is that is exposed the better there are three main ways to keep your quilt sandwich together you have a tacking which has two methods. The second way is by gluing, which also has two methods. And the third is specialized batting, which I will only be talking about one way. The first method in tacking is pins. To make the job easier, these quilting pins are a number three and they have a bend in the pen. I have also used bigger safety pins from Joann's in the quilting section. And what I normally do is dump a pile on the top of the quilt and tack them about hands width apart, about five to six inches. <clears throat> I leave them open and then when I'm done with that section, 
I go back and I close them all and move on to the next section. You can also use thread or yarn to tack. I just use the needle and thread and I start in the center of a section or the quilt. And I take really big stitches, about an inch and an inch and a half, something like that. Pull the thread through. You don't even have to tie a knot. Just leave a, a tail. You can just leave it and continue working your way up to the top or the edge of the quilt. Big stitches are fine because it's just for basting after all. And it's going to come out in the end. After I've done going vertical, I take a 90 degrees and I go horizontal and I keep going until I've complete put in all the stitches. You want them about every four to five inches. This should really hold them for a long time. I've had done this method and had them stay for a couple years before I've gotten back to quilting them. The next method is to add glue. There are two ways of adding it. The first I don't have, but it is bonding powder. This is a product by Quilter Select. It comes in a bag inside a cardboard container. You just clip off the corner, dump the content into the container, and place the lid back on. You pull back your quilt top, you sprinkle on your powder, bring your quilt top back down, and you apply heat. Do not use steam. It needs several seconds per spot, then repeat the process to the next section, and then on to the back until it has all been glued. The second method is spray basting. I mainly use 505. You will want to protect your surface and have a well vented area. If you can do this outside, that would be even better. But I live in Windy, Wyoming, and that's not ideal here. The wind blows too much. I lay everything down just like I did before. I roll up the quilt top about halfway. I spray that whole area and then I unroll the quilt top and press it down. I go and I repeat to the other half of the quilt top. Then I roll the batting and the quilt top up and spray the back fabric. I unroll, press to adhere, and repeat with the other half. The next way is with specialized batting, and this method is with fusible batting. This is a batting that has been pre-glued to make your sandwich <clears throat> stick together. You can get it where it's glued just on one side or where it's pre-glued on both sides. So you make your sandwich just as we've done before, but at the end, you just simply press with a hot iron. Do not use steam. I use a piece of parchment paper when I'm gluing the edges so I don't have any glue on my face plate of my iron. With all these methods, you need to take an extra look at the back after you have removed the tape as the fabric can spring back and cause creases or wrinkles. Just take the time, if you have them, to adjust your pins and smooth them out. Take the necessary adjustments. I have showed you a lot of products in this video. If you're interested in any of them, I'll have links for them in the description below. But one thing that I do recommend is that you take several of them for a test drive and see which one is best for you. You will also find when you're making different quilts, different size quilts, different level of precision, you're going to prefer a different method of basting that sandwich. So make sure that you have tried and know which one works best 
for which situation. If you're looking for more tips, tricks, check out this playlist right here. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell beside the subscribe button so you'll be notified when I make my next video. Until then, happy quilting my friends.